What's up guys, this is Stacker Factor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to ship your silver in the mail. Let's get stacking. <sighs> All right, guys, welcome back to the channel and happy Valentine's Day. So this video is about shipping silver in the mail. Now you might ask, Stacker Factor, why do you ship your silver in the mail? Well, I like to sell my silver every now and then. Sometimes I just want a little extra cash or sometimes I want to sell some silver so I can buy a piece of silver that I really, really want. I sell silver to raise the money to get that piece. I like to sell my silver online. I use PMs for sale and I ship everything to the buyer. I do this versus going to the LCS or local coin store because your coin dealer is going to give you spot if you're lucky and they're usually going to give you a dollar or two under spot. Online, this buffalo I could sell for probably two or three bucks over spot. It doesn't sound like much, but if we're talking about 20 buffaloes, all of a sudden that's between 40 and 60 extra bucks. I'll take that all day long. It's fun selling to fellow stackers, and it's really, really easy to do. So a general rule of thumb to go by is if you're selling nine ounces or less, you're going to be doing your, your own packaging. If you're selling 10 ounces or more, you're going to be using a USPS small flat rate priority box. So we're going to start with selling these three buffaloes. So there's four things that you need to get started. The first is some good high quality tape. I recommend this scotch tape. You can get these really cheap. It's awesome stuff. I picked up this like eight pack or 10 pack of them from Amazon for like 20 bucks and they last forever. The next thing that you're gonna want is a generic mail scale. These are about eight bucks on Amazon and they work great. The third thing you're gonna need is a measuring tape. And the fourth thing you're gonna need is a way to make your label. I use stamps.com. I think I pay 10 bucks a month for a membership there. But you can use other things like Pirate Ship, which I believe is free. I just use stamps.com because I have an account for work, so might as well. But yeah, once you have those four things, we can kind of get started. If you're shipping, say these three buffaloes, you're actually going to need one more thing, and that is a bubble mailer. Let me zoom out here. Sorry about the mess on the desk. Now, you could use this solo. All you have to do is just pop your rounds, your coins in there, tape it up, and you're good to go. However, it's a little janky. They're going to slide around. So there's two ways to get around that. The first way, and what I normally do is I will put my pieces in one envelope like this, I'll fold it over, make sure these are at the bottom here. I'll fold it over like that. I'll get my trusty tape here. Give me one sec as I try to get this uh, going here. It's kind of hard to get a good grip of the tape without fingernails since I am wearing gloves. Bear with me one second, guys. Okay, I got my tape started. So what I'll do is I will put a little piece of tape like this over this envelope. That way everything is nice and secure. I will get a second envelope, pop that in, make sure that's nice and secure, fold one side over just like that. Um, if you're shipping in a mailer like this, you wanna make sure it's at least six inches long, no less than that. That's where this little measuring tape comes in, but we'll get to that in a sec. What I'm going to do now is add one more piece of tape, just like this. 
Then the next thing I will do is get my label. I'm gonna use a uh, fake label here. Give me one second to find it. Here we go. Here's my label. And so what I would normally do is put this label on here like that and then just tape it over. I like to cover the entire label with tape. This is supposed to be a barcode right here, just so you guys kind of get the picture. You can never use too much tape. You want to mummify the package. You can tape over the label, it is fine. And there you go. Taping over the label is actually pretty important because if I spilled water on this, it just goes off. It's not gonna like smear any of the text, as well as if something stabs it or pokes it, it's not gonna tear the paper. And this essentially is good to go. Now I would add a little bit more tape and just because I like to be extra thorough, but right here you can ship this. Let's see how much this weighs. I have it set to ounces. It weighs 5.36 ounces. Now, of course, you're gonna weigh it before you put your label on. If you're using stamps.com, you're gonna put your info in, the recipient's info in, you're gonna put the length, width, and height of the package in, um, and you're gonna pick how quickly you want it to get there. Just use general ground regular ground shipping when you're shipping in your own package like this. And then you're gonna print your label, stick it on here like I did, and you're good to go. This is essentially ready to get dropped off at the post office. Now, let's say you are shipping something that weighs a little more. As you can see, this is 10 troy ounces, but it weighs almost 12 ounces, standard ounces, I guess you call it. So for that, what you're gonna use is one of these. This is a USPS small flat rate priority box. You can get as many of these as you want free at the post office. I usually grab 10 or 20 at a time because I do sell a lot and they're really easy to assemble. You just have to fold up a few flaps just like this. Then you fold it over. I hope I'm getting this in frame. And fold this one under, that one over, this one over, this one over, and then there's these little flaps on the side here. You just tuck them in, and you are good to go. Your box is assembled. So the way that I like to pack these is with something like this. This is a, an Amazon bubble mailer. It's free. You get these all the time when you order stuff on Amazon. What I'll do is I'll take my silver, I'll put it in there, I'll wrap it up just like this, maybe fold one end over, just so it kind of fits in there like that. It's not moving all over the place. If you have another extra one, you can stuff it in there too. But let's give it a shake. That's not moving around anywhere, so I actually wouldn't put any more in this. This is good to go. The next step would be to peel off this little piece of paper right here. Underneath that paper is some adhesive. And all you do is you just fold it up like that and you're almost ready to go. Let me grab another label real quick. Let's pretend this is a label that I just printed out. What I would do is put the label on there just like that. I know this is kind of washed out, so let me put from to, okay, there's my label. So the way that you want to do this is you want to take your tape and you want to start right at the top up here. Put one layer of tape like this, go all the way around, making sure you're getting these little creases here. And you got one part of this done. You're going to do it to this side, just like that. You're going to do it one more time just to cover the entire thing.
Now, once you have tape all the way around that way, we're gonna go the other way. We're gonna go like that, like that. <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. And like that. So now, essentially, you're done. You're ready to just take this to the post office. No water is gonna be able to get anywhere on the label or the box and weaken it. Nothing's really gonna be able to break through here. And these boxes are freaking awesome. Now, why I said the general rule of thumb is 10 ounces or more go in one of these is because these will ship anywhere in the country in three days or less for about $9. I think it's $8.55. So you can just pack this thing with silver. I've put two or three tubes in one before. Um, it's just the way to go. If you want to ship like 10 ounces or 11 ounces in your own packaging, you can, but sometimes it actually costs more. And even if it costs like 50 cents less, it's still just better to get one of these boxes. These boxes are freaking awesome. I've never had a problem with them. And uh, the delivery time is just killer. So that's kind of how you ship these. I'm trying to think if I missed anything in this video. Um, and what's also nice about these boxes is you don't have to worry about a scale because I mean it doesn't really matter how much it weighs you can fit 75 pounds into it you don't have to worry about measuring it because it's already measured out they're free like I said before and these are just my generally preferred way to ship stuff now if you're shipping with one of your own envelopes and say maybe you just have one envelope I can show you guys a little trick. You can get a piece of paper, or in this case, I'm gonna get a doggy bag. And let's say you only have one envelope. What you can do is something like this. Let me get this open again here. I have so many envelopes because I just save them whenever I get them. Let me see if I can get these out real quick. I might fast forward this. Okay. Say you only have one envelope, right? And you need to ship these three, three buffaloes. You get something like a piece of paper. I like a doggy bag because it doesn't weigh anything. So it's not going to add any extra weight. Oops. You could wrap up your silver in that doggy bag. Take your trusty tape and just kind of tape it all together like this. So these rounds aren't going to move. They're nice and solid. Then you can just pop it in, tape it up, and you're good to go. Just remember when you're doing your own packaging, you're going to measure it. And on your shipping portal online, it's going to tell you your minimum dimensions. It's usually six inches in length, four inches in width. So you can see here, this is seven and this is five. So we're good there. I'm just gonna fold this over one inch and then I would tape it up and put my label and do all that and you're good to go. So that's shipping, it's super duper easy. When you ship with USPS, you get a tracking number and it's customary to send that tracking number to the buyer as soon as possible. That lets the buyer know that you actually put it in the mail and it gives them the ability to track it all the way to their house. That also protects you too because if it gets lost in the mail or if maybe the buyer gets it, they can't say like, oh, I never got it because you have a tracking that says it was delivered to them. Um, let's see, what am else? what else am I missing here, guys? Um, most buyers, this isn't, really a shipping thing but most buyers will pay with zelle zelle is the best shipping or zelle is the best payment method i do take paypal i do take venmo i do take cash app but zelle is my favorite because it transfers the balance right into your bank account whereas uh, like cash app and venmo you have to once you get paid you have to transfer it transfer your balance from there to your bank account and that can take a couple days so Zelle is the way to go when you get 
you know, when you're selling, um, put that as your preferred payment method. Uh, go with USPS. Don't even bother with UPS or FedEx. UPS is the best. It's easiest. There's post offices everywhere. That's kind of like what everybody ships with. Again, um, you can sign up for pirate ship or stamps.com to get your portal. All you need is a printer to print your label. You don't even need like a special type of label paper or a label maker, although those are really awesome. I just print it from my printer and just slap it on with the scotch tape. And yeah, I think that's just about, oh, um, gold. Gold is way easier to ship than silver. Something like this is perfect for gold, especially if it's like one ounce or a one tenth ounce coin. Um, however, if it is something really like a really nice one ounce gold coin, you might wanna just ship it in these anyway, just because it gives you more protection. Uh, these are insured up to $100, which isn't very much, but most shipping portals will allow you to add insurance for an extra cost. I've had uh, a buyer buy a gold ounce coin from me before, and he requested insurance and actually paid the extra like $18 to insure it up to like 2500 bucks or something so everything on the portal is really easy pretty much no matter what company you use. But yeah, that's that's about it, guys. If I missed anything or you have any other questions, let me know. Um, there's other little tricks that you can learn that I, I kind of don't want to tell you on the channel right now because I don't want USPS finding out and, um, you know, correcting it. But there's there are some other little tricks to shipping where you can kind of get away with shipping more or less um, for a cheaper price or whatever. <laughs> With the boxes, if you're shipping tubes, sometimes they'll bulge just a tiny bit in these um, small flat rate boxes. That's okay. Just make sure it's not really bulging out. Um, if you can fit it in here, you can ship it. So even if it is really bulging out, they'll still deliver it. But you don't want to risk the box just busting open, even with the tape. Although I've never had that happen to anything that I've sent. So... I hope this video helps you guys. Um, don't be intimidated when it comes to shipping. When I first started selling, I needed to sell some kilos because I wanted the money. I had some other stuff I had to pay for. Kilos are big, bulky, and heavy, and I was not happy with what my LCS was going to give me. So I shipped them in these small flat rate boxes and had no problem at all. Really, really save all of your old bubble mailers, all of your Amazon mailers, save any kind of bubble wrap, that kind of stuff, because you can just pack stuff in here and make it really secure for your buyers. But other than that, that's really it, guys. It is super easy to do. Um, like I said, don't be intimidated. Once you learn how to sell, not only is it really empowering, but it's really fun because you're selling to other stackers who are really, really grateful to be buying from you. I kind of sell, you know, I don't sell super cheap because I need to make a, make a buck or at least make my money back plus a little extra, but it's still usually cheaper than what you can get at your LCS in a state that charges tax. So like if I'm selling to another person in California, I could sell them a Buffalo for 27 bucks or 26 bucks, for example. Whereas a LCS might sell it for that plus an 8% tax. And like I said, one buffalo is not going to matter. But if you're buying a tube of, you know, 20 buffaloes for 500 bucks, 8% tax is a lot of money to be tacking on to that. It's like 40 bucks or something. So a lot of buyers really, really do appreciate you as a seller. It's Valentine's Day, guys. Wrap it up if you're getting any strange mrs stacker and i are probably gonna light some candles chill out watch a movie enjoy our time together and um yeah guys as always keep on stacking this is stacker factor signing off